Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, if you're a contractor, you're going to want to watch and take notes on this next segment. We're going to talk to a guru who's going to teach you how to 10x your business. That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. All right, let's suppose you're an expert in HVAC, you've got a, a heating and air company, but uh, you're really good at fixing stuff. You're not good at fixing your own business. And there's that old saying, you wanna work on your business, not in your business. Someone who knows a lot about that, my next guest, Daniel Fitzgerald III, he's the CEO of Global Growth Networks. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I'm fascinated by people's journey. How did you get into this space? Well, for the past 20 years, I've been helping contractors to grow their businesses. So um, I build dealer networks. So I help the manufacturer to get their product, their service to the end user, the consumer. So that's the homeowner or the business owner. But they do this through the conduit is, is the contractors. So um, I help them to bridge that gap and I help the contractors to, to grow. Sure. And that comment I made off the top of the show is very true that many of these people are very skilled. They can, they can fix a heating and air unit, but uh, fixing their own business is foreign to them. Well, there's multiple departments that sometimes they're not even aware of. And you're right. They, they're good at the actual hands-on part of it. And they might, be, they might be good at sales or they might be good at production. But to understand how their whole business flows and to be an expert in all facets of it, no, they, they need help. Sure. We've got some video from our, our library that we're going to put up while we're talking about this. Um, so your ideal client, uh, give me a for instance, what, what would be your, your perfect client? Well, it, it, it's a broad base. I mean, it's um, it, typically it's somebody that goes into a home and helps a, a homeowner to take care of the issues that they, that they have. So these are home services providers for the most part. But, um, I mean, any entrepreneur really falls into our, our realm. Now, what size company? Well, we've taken companies from $2 million to $10 million to $20 million. I mean, it's, uh, and a lot of times these are family run businesses. Sure. So um, it, it, really, it really matters to them because it's their kids taking over. And a lot of times their kids are working in the business. And I've watched some of these um, younger, you know, family operations right. uh, really take off where the kid eventually becomes the owner. Okay, when you get brought in to coach one on one, are there some, uh you know, likely suspects, that were places that you look for money leaks or things that they're doing wrong? What, what are some common mistakes that small business owners make? Yeah, that's, that's you hit it right on the head. Um, there, and I've done trainings all over the country, uh, two-day trainings and uh, speaking engagements. And I actually wrote a book on that topic, <laughs> which is how to find the bottlenecks, how to uncover them in your business. So um, there's, it's in depth and there's, again, multi-departments so each department has areas where that money can be filtered out and you've got to catch it. So that's, uh, that's just, that's exactly what we, what we're focused on. Yeah. Even some uh, blocking and tackling stuff like following up on phone calls. I'm imagining that some of these places are so busy out there servicing clients that they're not actually getting back to new leads in a timely way. Yeah. That falls into the call center pipe. Yeah. So. Uh, the way this works is your, your marketing pipe is the top one. The pipe flows into the call center pipe. That's one of the KPIs in that, in that department. So what I've done is I've, I've devised key performance indicators for each marketing pipe. So each, each department in their, in their company. Nice. Okay. Let's talk about your book and we can put that uh, book cover up on the screen. Uh, how long have you been working on the book? Well, this book is really, uh, the, the conception is the trainings that I've always done. So I've been doing this for, for literally 20 years. And, uh, you know, as, as I've done these trainings, 
and I'm talking to contractors and I'm going through this concept of the pipeline, the business, their business pipeline, I've seen the light bulb go off. Yes. And that's what really hit me. And that's actually what I'm passionate about is when I see that, I know, wow, this is, this is making an impact in their business. So the book itself, last year, I finally, I've been wanting to get it down and, and, and create a consolidated um, area for all this content. And uh, so 2023, uh, took that whole year and, and put the book together. Congratulations. And it's a Thank huge you. audience. I mean, when we talk about contractors, I mean, this is, uh, you know, tens of billions of dollars a year. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. And uh, it's funny, as the economy fluctuates, more people invest in their home. Right when they get when they get scared and uh, uh, you know they 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 go back to hey this is this is my my castle so yes. I'm going to invest in my castle so um, it's huge and then the other component is that less young people are going into the trades right so you know that's another area that uh, that that we can talk about but um, that an area where homeowners more homeowners that need it and it's hard to find quality contractors so by helping these contractors. And integrity it comes in it into that play too. So, sure. you know, we want we want them to, you know, to change that perception of what a contractor is. You know, and uh, they, you could be a high high integrity company, and these family run operations, you know, that they are. That's how they are. And do you find that your clients are pretty open to coaching? Uh, you know, uh, there's a common, you know, that's that's the way we've always done it. Uh, are they open to, you know, reimagining their business? Surprisingly, they are, and. Um, the training that I've done where that light bulb goes off, mm -hmm. that kind of opens up, you know, the, the door. They're, they're more receptive when they, when they start to hear some of these things that they hadn't um, really been aware of before. I mean, the, there isn't an education for what I do. Right. You know, you can't, you can't go out there and, and take, a, take a, a, a curriculum in college on, uh, on how, to, how to build your, your local business hands-on. Yeah. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And, and teachers, you know, are, they teach where, you know, we're, we work, you know, right in the, in the field. So, so um, talk about the, the people who are the high performers I and mean, we can all sing their jingles cause they're on television all the time. What are these people doing right? Well, I think it's, they've stepped out of working and you mentioned it earlier, stepped out of working in their business and now they're working on their business. So if you go to my book, the your business pipeline, it's each pipe is a department. And they and they flow into each other. So I mentioned the marketing pipe generates the leads that flows into the call center pipe. And as you mentioned, you've got to capture those calls. If you don't, there's a bottleneck there that's uh, that needs to be addressed. Sales pipe is is obviously closing ratio, mm -hmm. an average dollar per sale. So that's what you know sales. That's what we're, we're we're aimed at. But as we flow into these pipes, these companies that that are successful they understand the nuances of each department. Yeah. And as I say, they're working on their business, so they're stepping out and they're looking down at their business and looking into the inner, inner workings. They're looking at those KPIs. And the, a KPI is basically the accountability for that person running that department. So those are the guys that are successful. And what I tell my contractors is, I don't, eventually, I don't want your name on any of those pipes. I want you to have to delegate and to, whether it's internal or whether you go out and have to recruit and hire someone sure. and then train them to, to be the person that's going to be accountable for that pipe. So eventually each department in their company is, is managed by someone else. That's the key. Okay. You got to get them to there. The big buzzword these days is AI. So artificial intelligence, does that play a role in anything that you're doing these days? Yeah, well, it absolutely does. Uh, it plays a role in the, in the marketing for sure. Uh, and that's a lot of, um, you know, what, what we do in my area of expertise and my teams is helping them with their marketing efforts. So uh, a lot of, um, you know, what goes on today, repurposing, repurposing content. Yes. Um, back in the day, there used to be a, um, a term, uh, guerrilla marketing. Yeah. And, uh, and that was re that's really what it is, is we, we still do it today. We just do it digitally. But it's a repurposing of content. Uh, so what I tell my guys is... Um, they really should think of themselves as a reality TV show, yes. even though they're a contractor. But that's what they should be doing. So I, I tell them, have somebody with even an iPhone uh, held horizontally is the key. And, and video everything, everything you sponsor, everything you participate in. I mean, all, all, the, all the, the things that your brand is in front of, yes. um, you want that captured. 
he, you of all people know, you know, or I'm preaching to the <laughs> choir, but, but, uh, but really that's contractors don't think that way. Yeah. And that it, it makes a big difference. Then you repurpose that content yes. through guerrilla marketing. Now you also have a nonprofit. Yeah. That's another new, new venture, brand new actually. Um, but I'm at this point, I'm thinking of, um, what's my legacy going to be? Sure. What am I going to leave, you know, behind? And, uh, and I'm a family operation too. All my kids work work for me, and uh, you know, and, and have for for years. So I I believe in that. And um, so the nonprofit is American Dreams Realized. Mm-hmm. So it's American American Dreams Foundation dot dot org. And um, what that's designed to do is help college kids that want to become entrepreneurs and not necessarily go the corporate America route. Right. So American Dreams Realized is helping them to realize their American dream. Right, so it, all of these kids and more kids now since the pandemic, uh, more people are starting their own businesses, their own home businesses, right. and so that's what this is for. So I'm I'm providing grants. They can they can actually they can sign up right on. Um, they can apply right on uh, on our on my website uh, for the book, which is yourbusinesspipeline.com, sure. and they can fill out their application and be in line to get a grant to help them start their well, business. Wow, and and for for many young people who um, you know these days I see in these headlines that college isn't for everyone. Some of these young people, without taking on all this massive debt, can you know become an electrician or a plumber or uh, H, HVAC uh, person, and and sometimes have six figures like uh, in a very short time. You know, it's funny you, you hear all the time that kids they they graduated with uh, a you know a degree and. Um, uh, poetry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Just a liberal arts degree, and then they they and they spend so much money on their education, and then they want to uh, get a, a six figure job. Whereas you know the the guy that just becomes a, a you know a plumber right. uh, is is such a, a needed commodity, right? That Absolutely. they you know so no, you're, you're exactly right. That's it's crazy, but that's there's a lot of money. Sure, but, I mean I watch these these companies and help them to to grow to. Places they they never would dream that they could be making that kind of money. It transcends their their lives. Absolutely. Okay, we only have a little time left. So, uh, Daniel, uh, final thoughts. What would you like to leave people with? Well, I think um, a lot of what I wrote the book on and what I, why I started the nonprofit is that I believe that people should be doing what they love to do. And I don't think a, a lot of people fall into that category. I think they fall into these jobs where they're not happy, but they're going to work every day. They're getting their paycheck, and they don't know how to leave, and they don't know know how to get to something else. So what I'm trying to do is help them to be able to pick something they love, right, the, the career that they love based on what they love to do and what they're good at. And then from there, help them start their entrepreneurial endeavor, start to start their own their own business, their their American dream, right? Wow. And that's so that's what that's what it's about. You're an amazing guest. We're going to end with his website, which is yourbusinesspipeline.com. The great Daniel Fitzgerald III. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you, Jeff. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.